Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Cooper Fantasy. I am of course Cooper Fantasy. You can find all my articles online at my blog, CooperFantasy.com. That's K-O-O-P-A Fantasy.com. You can follow me on Twitter at sign Blackie underscore Mike. That's the easiest way to keep in touch with me and ask me questions. And uh, finally, like, subscribe to my videos, show them to your friends, stuff like that. It, uh, it all helps me out. And finally, uh, let's get right into it. This is my week 8 sit em start -em recap video where I recap the guys I suggested you sit or start. I was actually already about 7 or 6, 7 minutes into this video. I was about to finish it up when also my computer crashed. Not happy about that, so I'm going to try to fly through it, guys. Um, so it won't be as uh, extensive as usual. I'm going to try to keep this like 4 minutes, 5 minutes if I can and whip right on through this. Okay, so I had a couple of disappointing uh, results from the quarterbacks I told you to start. Sam Bradford and Brandon Whedon. Uh, Bradford was a better one with 205 yards. He threw a 50-yard touchdown pass to Chris Givens. Uh, I should note that Chris Givens now has an NFL record 50-yard pass or larger in each of his last five games. But that was the only touchdown pass Bradford threw. Uh, the Patriots proceeded to shut down the Rams for the rest of the game. They didn't score a single point after that. So disappointing effort from Bradford. Uh, Whedon uh, only ended up with 129 yards in one of the ugliest games we've had this year. Uh, 11 of 27 for just barely over 40% 40 40 of his pass attempts for, for completion. Uh, these quarterbacks combined, him and Phillip Rivers, for less than 300 yards. It was a terrible, terrible game. Uh, Brandon Wheaton has a decent matchup next week against the Ravens, but I'm not really liking it. I think it's going to be more Trent Richardson against that defense. So Brandon Whedon, uh, after a couple of good weeks, I think he might have a couple of bad ones coming up. And then uh, Wilson McGahee was one of the stars on my, uh, my start side of the list, 23 rushes for 122 yards, an early touchdown run, and then he continued to just pile the rush yards on after that. He did lose a fumble, but then he uh, also caught two catches for 33 yards. So in the end, it was uh, about an 18-point day for McGahee. Very good uh, effort. And I do like his matchup on uh, next week as well against the Bengals. Uh, Reggie Bush uh, against New York Jets was a disappointment. Uh, Daniel Thomas ended up being the guy to get the goal line carry and the score. Hopefully this isn't a sign of struggles to come for Bush. Uh, someone who has struggled as an every week starter before, so we might want to pay attention to that, and uh, he might be breaking down or something, uh, and he has had some injuries, so be careful with Reggie Bush going forward. This is coming from uh, maybe a Dolphins fan. Uh, Vic Ballard versus Tennessee ended up being uh, a pretty good choice. He uh, had a game-winning 16-yard catch for a touchdown that saved his fantasy day. He only had rushed 55 yards before that. Uh, go look at the highlight. It was a beautiful, uh, matrixy kind of run, uh, jump, kind of twist his back with the football over the pylon. Very cool to watch. And then, uh, so he ended up with a pretty good game, as well as Donald Brown, who actually averaged more than five yards per carry for more, for about 80 yards on the day. Uh, Darius Hayward Bay only had one catch for 32 yards, but luckily, saving him from my list, he caught it for a touchdown. So we ended up with nine points. A uh, pretty decent day for him. Uh, going forward, Denarius Moore is the Raider guy to start, but Her Darius Hayward Bay definitely has a, a guy to start on certain weeks and against KC uh, next week. Or, sorry, um, I guess that game against was KC. But I do believe that he has another decent matchup coming up next week. Uh, Denarius Moore and Hayward Bay, that is. Uh, Brandon Stokely was a disappointment. Uh, Payton threw for 300 yards and three TDs, but he completed it to his go-to guys. A uh, touchdown to Demarius Thomas and two touchdowns to Eric Decker. So there wasn't much left for Brandon Stokely. You can put this guy back on the waiver wire. Uh, Jason Witten had a big game, 18 catches. That's a, a record for him, 167 yards. No touchdown to go with it, unfortunately, which would have made it a huge game. But uh, with Romo struggling lately, I think he's going to keep looking Witten's way after a game like this. He's such a uh, security blanket for him. Uh, how, how could he not, you know? And then uh, Dustin Keller versus Miami had a mediocre tight end day, seven catches, 67 yards. Uh, he's on a bye coming up this week, but he should be good to go after that. And the way tight ends are playing, they're, they've they been very up and down. you got to like this guy going forward. Uh, Mark Sanchez definitely has good uh, repertoire with him. All right, on to the sit -ums. Matt Stafford, uh, terrible choice here. I thought he would wait one more week to break out. I knew he was going to, but I didn't think he would this week against one of the league's best defenses. But bottom line is start Matthew Stafford every week going forward with confidence. Uh, not so much with Jay Cutler, though. He had a decent yardage total, 19 of 28 for 286. Only threw one touchdown, though, and uh, fumbled the ball twice and threw an interception, uh, taking away a lot of his value. So if you have Cutler as your starting QB, you m I hope you got a good backup that you can interchange him with, depending on the matchup, because I do not like this guy as my everyday starter. Uh, Sean Green versus Miami was actually pretty good. He uh, uh, beat Reggie Bush, which uh, kind of angered me. He had 15 rushes, 77 yards, and then caught two more two balls for 29 yards. So about a nine or 10 point day, depending on your league. Uh, so I gotta kind of, as much as I do not like Sean Green, I have to admit his ball catching abilities are greatly improving. And as long as he stays heavily involved in their uh, run game, he should be a good option going forward. Uh, Mike Ellishore, another dud game from him. No surprise though, it was against Seattle. I guess his fourth dud game in a row, but he's had some pretty tough matchups against Seattle, the Bears, Philly. Uh, it was another tough game in there somewhere. 
Uh, so there's some definite concerns with the shore, another one being Joy Bell, but I'm pretty sure he's got another he's got a good matchup coming up in week nine, so uh, pay attention to that. Doug Martin, uh, him and Stafford, easily the worst choices of the possibly the year for me so far. 29 rushes, 135 yards. What a workload for the guy. 29 rushes. That should be a, a green light for you to play this guy going forward. The team obviously knows, loves him, knows what he can do. You saw it in this game. He also caught three balls for 79 yards and a touchdown. Just a monster game from him. So, well, yeah, be very confident with Doug Martin going forward. And I do believe he actually has a pretty good schedule as well. Uh, Kenny Britt, another week of him on the field, another sub-50 yard effort. So, yeah, very disappointing. It was an OT game as well. I guess he didn't get his hands on the ball in OT, though. Um, Kendall Wright actually ended up having a t touchdown catch as opposed to Kenny Britt or uh, Nate Washington. So, uh, until Jake Locker comes back, I might be looking at Kenny Britt to stay on the bench. and may Maybe Jake Locker will be the guy to help him uh, return to form. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, another dud game from him that makes three in a row. Uh, Vic threw for less than 200 yards in the game, so there wasn't really a whole lot to go around. And Jackson has yet to see more than nine targets in a game. No uh, double-digit games for targets. And he's yet to top 25 yards since week four, so I'm a little worried about this guy. Although his matchup in week nine is an easy start against uh, New Orleans. Andre Roberts uh, versus San Fran. He actually ended up leading uh, the Cardinals in tar uh, I targets and uh, eventual catches in yards, seven catches, five yards. But not a huge game from him. He's the kind of guy you want to be starting on uh, favorable matchups only, really. I wouldn't be wanting this guy in my uh, match in my lineup every week unless it was a desperate flex option or something like that. And uh, last thing I'm going to mention here is the player pickup of the week. I do not like his matchup next week against Jacksonville. I think you're going to see a lot of Calvin uh, just beating that crappy secondary and just having a good game for once. And we're going to see quite a bit of the shore and Joy Bell against that bad run defense. I think Teddy Siong isn't going to quite get, get get the chance to produce the way he did uh, this week. Although he is that easily a guy you want to go pick up off your way to wire. All right, guys, it's still been seven minutes still, so I went longer than I wanted to. Uh, let me wrap this up. Koopafantasy.com, uh, Twitter, at sign Blackie underscore Mike, and like, subscribe to my videos. All that stuff helps you out greatly. Uh, my week nine sit em start em, uh, suggestions are going to be uploaded in a matter of minutes. I, I've actually already recorded the video. I just got to uh, get it up. I want to get this one up first. All right, guys. Cooper Fantasy signing out. Peace.